Now, just a few days ago, we witnessed Donald Trump give his State of the Union address. In it, he details some of the horrors that have been committed by the organized crime organization, MS-13. And he used those images to push his immigration agenda, which would push many peaceful, regular people out of the country and prevent many others seeking to escape poverty from entering the country as well. But what he didn't talk about, and what the mainstream media in general did not talk about, was the American origins of that organization. Now, MS-13 has over 6,000 members, according to the FBI. Now, its violent reach reportedly extends across Central America, Mexico, to Los Angeles, and to Washington, D.C. Now, while many in the mainstream media were very happy to denounce Donald Trump for his blatant scaremongering, not many of them were really willing to dig up or talk about the cause of the organization's creation, that being U.S. foreign policy, and not the uh, idea that we're given that somehow Central American teenagers are just inherently evil. And it's a story that not only details how the United States created MS-13, but how both the Democrats and the Republicans are responsible for its creation. MS-13 was founded in the 1980s in Los Angeles, California, by refugees fleeing the Civil War in El Salvador. The war pitted a right-wing government against Marxist guerrillas. President Ronald Reagan's administration played a key role in the dirty war, providing military and financial backing to the regime's military, according to Raymond Bonner, the author of Weakness and Deceit, America and El Salvador's Dirty War. Following the 1992 peace agreement in El Salvador, the United Nations Truth Commission, established as a part of the accord, found that more than 85% of the killings, kidnappings, and torture had been the work of government forces. These included paramilitaries, death squads, and army units trained by the United States. Some of the wars took place at the same time in neighboring Guatemala and Nicaragua. These developments spurred a massive exodus of refugees to the USA. So where does the Republicans and the Democrats come into this? Well, in 1996, Bill Clinton signed the Illegal Immigration Reform and Immigration Responsibility Act, which basically erased the deportation of migrant criminals. Now, the Clinton administration tried to tackle the growing power of MS-13 by deporting suspected members back to Central American origins. This policy continued under both Presidents Bush and Obama. So regardless of which side of the aisle someone is standing on, both sides are equally guilty. Now, the instability of these Central American states largely caused by U.S. foreign policy intentionally to stabilize them meant that Clinton's policy only really succeeded in creating a transnational cycle of organized crime. They would come in, get kicked out, come in, then get kicked out. And now that encouraged the spread of MS-13 across the United States and Central America. Now this is one of the consequences of imperialism. When you create these kinds of conditions, these wars against countries that are targeted to be clients of the United States, to essentially just be puppets, and then there's a popular resistance to it, when the U.S. comes in to shut down the will of the regular working class people in these countries, it creates the conditions to build organizations like MS-13. Now, when people try to escape the country and they come to the United States and they end up with no opportunity, etc., they're discriminated against, etc., many of these young men turn hostile towards the very system that rejected them. Not only did it reject them in the United States from being considered members of society, but also rejected them by trying to destroy their countries at home. And you could see there would be some kind of a, a subconscious resentment towards the people that caused this kind of suffering in their life. And they do what anyone else does. If they cannot make a living within the formal economy, they will go to the informal economy in order to do so. And in this case, highly organized crime. And even then, much of this is relatively benign when we consider the organized the crime organization known as the United States. U.S. foreign policy alone, and just the sheer mechanism of, of accumulating capital, is already worse than anything that organized crime has ever done. For much of the vaunted uh, complaining about MS-13... What U.S.-backed forces in Syria have done is worse than anything MS-13 has done. 
the funding of both Al-Qaeda and ISIS inside of Syria and in the region in general has been one of the worst things that's ever happened to the Middle East, and far greater than anything organized crime, the Mafia, bikers, or MS-13 have ever done to people in the United States. So not only do we see the United States as the cause of these terrible disasters against humanity, we see them also trying to take this kind of moral high ground, like they're the ones who are going to put a stop to it, or they're the only ones with the moral purity that would be able to tackle these, and they're, they're going to be the good guys in this situation. When in truth, there is no good guys in this situation. This is a problem that U.S. imperialism has caused. And not only do they now have to deal with the problem they cause, they're also using that problem at the same time to push forward a xenophobic immigration policy. And it just shows you, you know, once again, that despite the lamenting and the criticism of the Democrats, of the liberals inside of the United States, their champions, oh, Bill Clinton, etc., are still as guilty for the crimes of imperialism as the Republicans are. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.